Good afternoon to everyone. Hello, how are you? My name is Ricard. Uh, in Catalan, it's Ricard. It's going to be easier for me to talk about my name in Catalan. Uh, Ricard Garriga, we are organizing this uh, competition. Uh, my name is Rebecca Huang. I'm the co-founder of youNoodle.com that many of you used to apply for this competition. So thank you for being here. We are really excited to have a lot of people here. Um, the main goal of the four years for, from now, and especially to the mobile competition, is to look for the best companies from all over the world. We're looking for um, the disruptive technology from all over the world to come to Barcelona. So the process, we're super excited to explain what, what was exactly the mobile startup competition. So the selection uh, process that we have here, we are looking for early stage companies uh, in their five years, uh, venture uh, ambitious teams for sure, and innovative technology. So innovative means that something super new and super cool. And we had a great uh, number of companies that applied to this competition, over 450 co applications that were started uh, from 49 countries and 88 cities. Out of those, 192 qualified entrants that met all of the requirements were considered for the judging process uh, of the competition. And let me tell you, most of these companies were really early stage, less than one year old, um, maybe only two people, less than 10 people mostly uh, in their teams, and less than $500,000 uh, in funding to date uh, in euros. So if you can see on this map, you can, each point, each blue point is a company that applied to come to Barcelona. So uh, that companies are judged by 30 global experts. Experts means venture capital, entrepreneurs, uh, and corporates. And we have here some pictures of them. So we have people like John Hoffman, the CEO of uh, GSMA. We have here people like uh, Diane Esnor from uh, Waze, uh, Mike from Doodle, so Marcos from Menorca. We have a lot of cool people here. And the judging criteria. So what was the judging criteria to select just 10 out of 192? So innovation. So need to be a super cool innovation company. So impact, global impact in the global world. Uh, scalability, uh, the awesome team, and then the potential for financial return. And we had finalists uh, from a very different range of countries and cities. As you see, we had them from uh, all over Europe, Berlin, Paris, and, and Moscow, Madrid, and a local from Barcelona. And then we had them from Israel, Haifa, uh, Basel, London, really, really all over the place. And I would like to tell you a little bit about some of these finalists. Uh, we have our one-liners from these companies. The companies um, were representing different sectors that are really exciting today. Um, a couple from the wearables space uh, that have different devices that you can use to leverage the new uh, hardware that we have in the mobile space, Internet of Things, um, education and customized advice, uh, well-being and health monitoring using mobile applications and, uh, and hardware, and also network startups that create new types of infrastructure, both in the developed world as well as the developing world. So we have companies like uh, AirFi to simplify Wi-Fi portable access point. Uh, we have Alima that helps you monitor air quality around you with a mobile device. So we have CellBody allows to use inexpensive SIM cards when traveling abroad. Fairwaves is a company that builds mobile networks for low-income areas. And then uh, Infantium, personalized learning platform. This is going to be the five components that we can get now. And right after the, the, the break, we'll have more companies like... Ion Eyewear, uh, which has prescription eyeglasses that allow you to uh, interact with all of your mobile applications on your glasses. So life map, that's, that's, that's cool because I'm riding motorbikes all the time. So a smart motorcycle helmet with build navigation system. Quip lets you organize all of your uh, appointments and items uh, and then share that with your friends and family. So this is part of the Internet of Things movement. So recommend, customize, advice online. And finally, Stereo.io, which is an education platform that allows teachers to communicate with their students via SMS in Africa. 
And then the prizes, one of the most important parts. So the prizes, thanks to our, we are so proud of our sponsors, like Video. Video is providing 17,000 euros in in-kind services. Uh, M Director, 16,000 in-kind services too. Soft Layer, uh, $24,000. Uh, ILEA, the Fundation ILEA from Barcelona, six months of free space to, uh, for all the 10 participants to uh, land in Barcelona. Be a startup, accelerator fast track for, from the Bank de Sabadell uh, Bank here. Startup Embassy, one week in Silicon Valley, it's a mansion in Silicon Valley just for entrepreneurs. And Le Web, Le Web from Paris. We are so proud to get Le Web uh, on board. Uh, they will get three tickets for the three winners. Now, uh, Ricard, have you been inspired by all of these ideas and these prizes? I have an idea for an application, but uh, I don't have a co-founder who's a technical guy and I don't know how to code. What do I do? So that's the main problem that everyone has. So thanks to our company, our Testavit uh, partner, all of you, that's a challenge for all of you guys. So if you have any idea that can be converted to an app, to, to a cool app, you can apply there, testabit.com slash four years from now. So please apply there and you can write your idea. And then what happened? So a judges of this company, they select until to, to now, until tomorrow at 7 p.m., uh, the winner. So what it means is that if you have an awesome idea of an app, you can write your idea on this website and then the price gonna be the same app that you think. So please, guys, apply to this competition because that's going to be really So that cool. means that if my idea wins, they will build the application for me for free. Sure. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> that's really. So we are proud to have a, a welcome to our judges. So first of all, Xavier Capalladas, uh, head of new products at Telefonica Digital. So Xavi, come here. Thank you. <laughs> Second, Mike Naif, uh, CEO and co-founder at Doodle. Thank you, Mike. Welcome. Adolfo Soria, director, legal director at Video. Thank you, Adolfo. Christopher Bermerning, uh, co-founder of Active Venture and co-founder of Fondum. Thank you. <laughs> and then Matthew, entrepreneurship lecturer at ESE. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> I want to remind you that there is also a front row of judges who will be participating uh, both in the scoring of the teams as well as the questions and answers. Okay, so we, now it's turn, the turn to welcome the first company, AFI. Stephen, you can join us. Thank you. You have three minutes to do your pitch. So, that's yours. The timer is here. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, hi. Airfire is the mother of wireless things. And my name is Steffen Siebert. I'm the founder and CEO of Airfire, and I'm passionate about doing wireless things. I'm here with my team member, Arvid. He's a senior engineer at Nokia before, and now working for Airfire, and that's our product. We are inside a $19 trillion market that's forecasted by no one less than Cisco itself. What's the problem? The problem is we have isolated solutions from different companies like Philips Hue doing light. We have music, we have feeding, things like that. And these things don't communicate with each other. But to have a smart home, they have to talk to each other. Because what I want when I stand up in the morning, I want one simple thing. I go into the bathroom and my light should go on and my music should go on by itself. And when I leave my apartment, everything should go off by itself and also the heating and different stuff. And we are searching the partners for light, music, heating, put them together and have a working solution out of the box with these partners. When you leave your apartment, what do you want? What do I want? I want to have free secure Wi-Fi everywhere, in my restaurant, in my bars, everywhere. And the pain with Wi-Fi is mostly, it's not easy to use, it's complicated, and it's not secure and things like that. And we solve that pain. Once connected to AirFi, the next time you're automatically connected with a VPA2 password, and it's free for everybody because of local-based advertising. 
That's why we can make it free in restaurants and everything like that. We also got some traction. We showed a quarter of what we are doing at Indiegogo. And we collected 76,000 euro. That's 350 percent funding that we are looking for from 1,142 people. And we showed just a bit what we are doing. Also, TechCrunch likes what we are doing and say, say it's the sexiest Wi-Fi uh, hotspot that you wouldn't be ashamed to take home to mother. That was the headline. And all that shows us that we are on the good way to be the real mother of wireless smart things, to connect them and to make it easy for you to use it. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much for your presentation. Now it's time for the judges. Hello. OK. So uh, Stefan, thank you very much. Uh, just a very quick note uh, before we start the three minutes of uh, question and answer. So um, we, we will do very quick questions. Um, we try to do a, a couple of them. Uh, so we only have three minutes. Um, and we will probably try to do one from up here and one from the general judges. OK. okay? All right, so um, my first question is, later on I would like to introduce you to uh, Martin Vasavsky, the, the founder of Phone. And just, I mean, listening to your, um, to your vision, what's so different between you and, and Phone? Yeah, at Phone you need to be a member to have free Wi-Fi, and when you are not a member, you have to pay for it. At AirFi you are completely have free Wi-Fi just for seeing the ads. That's the main difference. Miguel Valls, Data Capital. Um, can you combine your technology with mobile payments? And if yes, have you thought about Bitcoin? Yeah, we do that because of one thing. What you can't see right now is the LEDs can blink. And when you are in a bar and you want to pay, you get a receipt. What does everybody want? Nobody wants an additional device. It must be easy. You just get the receipt, type in an amount in our app, and then you show the green screen to the waitress. She sees green must be screen, that the payment is successful, and this thing must blink. Then she knows, ah, the payment was there. That easy. And we combine it with PayPal for the start to have an easy payment source. How do you plan to distribute this? Do you have some kind of idea for your distribution, how you're going to get some traction out there so that you have a real network? Yeah. Um, the partners like we are talking about, for example, the heating, we have a partner for, and they have the pain that they have to sell a little gateway that communicates with the internet. We eliminate that gateway because of the device, so they are also selling our device for us. That's a partnership distribution system. Any more questions? Judges? Okay. Stefan, thank you very much. It's all Thanks. yourself. Bye. Thank you so much. Now it's time, now we can translate us to uh, Paris. Alima, Jax, welcome to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, we start with one short question. Um, <clears throat> what is the product, the daily product that you use and you need the most? It's the air. Actually, you know what you're eating, you know what you're drinking, but you have no idea about what you're breathing. And actually, what you're breathing is pollution. It's been declared carcinogenic to human group one, so it's as bad as asbestos or uh, cigarette smoke. Today, 30% of the population is suffering from air pollution, and the indoor air can be up to eight times more polluted than the outdoor. So how can you protect your health and improve your wellness by breathing safer, having better sleep, more energy, and more productivity? Introducing Alima. Alima is a patent-pending smart device monitoring your indoor air pollution and guiding you towards healthier living space. It embeds uh, the equivalent of six, six sensors for the organic compounds, particulate matter, 
carbon monoxide, deadly gas, carbon dioxide, temperature, and humidity. And we've created both prediction and prescription. Our algorithm detects your pollution trends so that we can notify you before you reach a peak. We provide also warnings and um, actionable advice uh, through push messages, like renewing efficiently your indoor air or changing your behaviors producing pollution. And Anima will go further by taking control over your appliances, like um, air monitor, like air purifier or air conditioner. The retail price is 189. We sold 100 beta units uh, in 24 countries, and we have so far 11,000 pre-orders. But the final product will be uh, available this coming summer. The uh, user is a urban, web-connected, and health and wellness-centric. Uh, we will reach them through B2B2C sales and growth hacking strategy. We are, we are a group of three co-founders. I'm Jack, the, C the CEO, with Olivier, CFO, and Inuk, who was working for the S Spanish startup Phone, and was created, he created a fab lab and is a hacker um, maker. And we've, we've, uh, we are concluding our um, seed round right now. So thank you very much, and with the green light on, wish you a very safe breathing day. Yes, thank you, Jacques, for the presentation. I would like to know how many devices are needed in a, in a simple flat to, for detecting pollution levels. Actually, it's based to have one per flat. One per flat. Yeah, because you have two type of areas. The one is the, the living rooms, so it's kitchen, living room, and eating, dining room. And the other one is the, the sleeping rooms. Yeah. And the most complex pollution is into the living rooms. So that's where you need it most. And there's another feature um, with Alima. You just turn it on, off, and then back again, and it will declare another um, way of measurement. So you can use it for a while in your bedroom Make sure that it's, everything is fine in your behavior in the, in the, bed, in the bedroom and then back to um, uh, the, the, the central um, space. Thank you. Silvia? Yes. Uh, my question is if you can explain a little bit in more details of how you can take over air purifiers in the home, such as Shanghai or Tehran, that, I mean, pollution really is as bad as it can be. Yeah. <clears throat> The thing is, the most easiest thing is to take control over the, the mobile appliances, and that's what is sold the most in the emerging countries, like the, in, in China, where they have really strong um, um, air pollution. So Alima will be cross-measuring the indoor air pollution and then giving the order to the, uh, the mobile appliances to optimize their use during the day, if, whether you are inside or outside the, um, the apartment. That's the idea, because you can use it with, by changing your behaviors, but when you are in, in countries where pollution is so bad, you need to treat the air, and for that, we interface the Alima with the uh, appliances. So I have a question. I mean, um, I heard from a, from a doctor that actually allergies are, are very much based on, no, on heavy metals. So my first question, heavy metals are also <coughs> measured uh, in, uh, with your... Um... One of the triggers for asthma is particulate matter. This is these tiny particles you inhale and they get into your lungs. And it's a real, real uh, bad trigger. And that's what we're measuring with, um, with Alima. Um, so have you done any testing with your device versus what's already on the market? I know there's nothing on the market that does everything that you do, but say with, with some of them, have you tested the accuracy versus the competition? First, um, I haven't found a real exactly same uh, product device in terms of because there is another one that it has the um, uh, or, um, volatile organic compounds but do not um, implement the um, particulate matter which are the two main ingredients, bad ingredients for you. Now we're also working with laboratories to benchmark the measurement. And remember, we do cross measurement, but we have a benchmark with the laboratory to 
uh, testify the, the quality of measurement. And it's like the quantified self. It's how you progress that is important, more than finding out how, how many uh, ppm of formaldehyde you would have uh, inside your, your home. Okay, thank you very much. Hello. You're welcome, thank you. Thanks. <laughs>《ソルバディ》デベロップテクノロジーがダウンロードオーバーエアシマイデンティティフォームデクラウドこのパテントペンディングテクノロジーはないのインテグレーションのオペレーターズ。私たちは作ったマーケットプレイスでオペレーターズが得ることが多くのビジネスを得ることができるようにしかし、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、And they can dial international calls at very low cost. Our revenue will come from marketplace fees, from uh, added value services, and also from service fees. Four years from now, we hope that most travelers and many home users will enjoy best prices and quality of service. By selecting new operator dynamically when their current operator is out of range or when there is a new plan available for them. Cellbody is an Israeli startup. The technology was developed and reached maturity during the last two years. We plan to commercialize the solution within、uh, the second half of this year. We see huge interest in our solution from operators, corporates, and many, many users. Our management team is very experienced. I had seven exits so far, and the founder of IRPAS has two exits already. We have raised so far close to $3 million. And we plan to be profitable in 2016 to, and to become a dominant player in the market for best price, quality, and connectivity. I would like to add Ophir Paz、uh, for the QA. Hello. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Do you listen to me? No. Okay.、Uh, first of all, congratulations for your pitch. And、uh, my quick question from the operator side、uh, Can you explain in more detail your business model with、uh, operators, with carriers? Do you want to resell the technology? Do you want to license it? You can explain in, in more detail, please.、Uh, I hope I understood the question. The operators really like the product, and the reason is, is that the biggest barrier for operators in order for them to sell mobile traffic. The biggest barrier is actually the marketing. So, for example, ATT last year spent about $2 billion on marketing. For example, I just landed、uh, yesterday in the airport and it was Sunday. So, for me to get a local SIM card, it was very difficult. With our app, everybody can just click and purchase the right SIM, the right plan for his, for his,、uh, per his preference. So, operators really like the product. It's, it's a method for them to sell. Their mobile traffic. We're transforming the offline SIM business or mobile traffic business and making it online.、Uh, what's your,、um, 
uh, exit strategy, which would be your eighth one, I'm assuming. We, we plan to uh, grow this company and, uh, and make it uh, a, a global player in this market. You know, whether we'll get acquired or we'll take it public somewhere, you know, around the world, I think it's only secondary. Our biggest concern right now is to create something which creates a lot of value from customers. And from here on, uh, I mean, it's, it remains to be seen what, what's going to be our, you know, exit strategy. Okay, just a quick question. I don't really understand yet from the user perspective how I get the SIM, and then is it the same one that I use everywhere I go? It just automatically knows what I want it to do? Like, is there friction for the user? Uh, yeah, we created our own SIM. So you have to replace your SIM card, and, and what you do is just use an app and click on the right SIM for you. Uh, let's say let's say you travel Each time between. I travel. Let's say no no. Let's say you travel between France and, and Spain, for example. So you can purchase two packages, and once you land in in Spain, for example, the Spanish package will automatically be uh, uh, turned on, and when you land in France, the uh, the French package will be turned on. So, so uh, it's it's automatic. For the first product, we're gonna supply a portable hotspot device that's gonna that's gonna. Uh, even alleviate the, uh, the, the uh, need to replace your SIM card. I would like to add, uh, in addition to that, that from the user perspective, he will get the same plans that uh, these operators offer for him on their uh, stores, and uh, he doesn't need to walk around, he just needs to click, and install the new plan on the fly, and from that moment, uh, it's his. Okay. We're not taking any position Th on the market. Thank you. Everybody, thank you very much. Sorry for that. Thank you so much. Now, now we're going to travel to Boston. Fairy Waves, they're building, uh, they have a great uh, space about here, uh, they're building uh, networks for low-income areas. So welcome, Alexander. Thank you. So uh, I'm Alexander Chemerus, and founder and CEO of Fairwaves, and we also have Henry Bachman here on stage. Um, oh, okay. So imagine a future after the last person on the, uh, on the earth has been connected to mobile networks and he can call his mom uh, or Facebook can reach him. It's a beautiful picture, but now it's not as beautiful. Right now, only two billion people can really afford to use mobile networks easily and uh, five billion uh, can't afford that. And we are going to change this. Uh, why so big disparity? It's just, it's just because uh, in uh, developing countries, mobile penetration uh, has stopped at quite low numbers. And with our technology, mobile penetration can go much, much higher. So our target is uh, to get a uh, level of profitable uh, RPU from $5 down to $2 or even lower. And why is it possible? It's because our solution is quite bare bones. We provide only voice, SMS, and very simple data. Uh, it's because we use a lot of open source. It's because we use advanced chip technology. And it's because our business model is service-centric, which means that we ship uh, hardware, but we make money on services. So let's imagine a small village GSM network, like this one. This is not actually a base station. This is a complete GSM network. Uh, and uh, well, we can make a call visit. Hello? Hi. Is there? So, um, oops, it's, there was another slide here. Anyway, so uh, we can run this uh, GSM network uh, in a village of 300 subscribers, uh, paying just $2 per month. Uh, and paying very little upfront investment, and the return of investment will be in just one year. And uh, this can easily scale to many, many villages uh, because of the voice over IP backbone, and uh, for a small network of, for example, 20,000 subscribers, the return of investment will be in just three years. And uh, we are also future compatible because we can easily integrate with LTE core networks. 
and we are already making mobile networks profitable. Uh, we are, oh, okay, we're missing another slide here. Uh, we are already deploying in Mexico uh, where we are planning to connect thousands of rural communities to the outside world. We believe in the world where everyone can receive a message. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Thank you very much, Alexander. Um, well, that's one question in two or two questions in one. Uh, the this is, how do you compete with, with Huawei and all those big players? And then the consequences, uh, basically, how do you plan to monetize through services? What kind of services? Okay, that's a very good question. Thank you. Uh, so the plan, uh, well, obviously, Huawei is a huge and uh, they can easily, probably easily can beat our hardware price, but um, we plan to apply uh, the internet model to the um, internet and Red Hat model to the world of telecommunications, basically aggregating uh, lots of users, uh, lots of subscribers who will uh, uh, who will be serviced by our equipment and uh, using revenue share uh, with mobile operators to, to, to get our money. Uh, and uh, once we have lots of users, we will be uh, more, uh, we will be quite well protected from just hardware expansion which Huawei can uh, provide. Uh, <clears throat> if I can ask a follow up question, sure. um, it's notoriously hard to partner with mobile operators, particularly for a very young company. So right. what's your game plan for that? Sure, so um, thank you, it's a very, very good question. So uh, one thing we are starting with is that we are starting with, uh, to work with small mobile operators who are much, much, much easier to partner with because they are starving and we are solving the real problem for them. And uh, well, once we prove this uh, with small mobile operators, it will be easier for us to work with bigger mobile operators. And this way we also can uh, uh, fly under the radar of Huawei for a while. <laughs> okay, uh, another question from, from operator side another time. Uh, are you talking with uh, other operators? Do you are thinking to talk with them to resell this technology because you have to invest a lot in hardware? What are your thoughts about it? Uh, sorry, uh, so the question is... Uh, Are you talking with uh, some partnership with uh, other uh, operators that can you, uh, help you to distribute uh, your uh, technology or yeah. your final solution? What are your thoughts about it? Yes, we are working... Uh, sorry, I not completely understand still. So, uh, yes, we are working with, mobile, with different mobile operators. We are speaking with some small mobile operators. We are, we are speaking with some bigger mobile operators. Um, if you could rephrase the question. I think that what's the partnership model with, with operators, basically? If you have one. You, uh, you mean, uh, can we share any mobile operator? Oh, no, not yet. Perfect. I think, <laughs> uh, very quick question. Are you, are you raising money? What's the amount you're looking for? Yes, we are raising money. And uh, right now, we are closing a small angel round. And we are looking for a much bigger um, round day investment in the next couple of months. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, good job. All right, the final company for today, right? Yeah. We have Karen Marquez, who is the local today from Barcelona, uh, heading Infantium. And uh, they're creating a tutor, a smart tutor for you and for your, for your children at home based on online tools. Karen, join us. So, okay, I'm Karen, I'm the co-founder of Infantium, and essentially, in Infantium, we're improving learning of young children. We are building the world's smartest tutor for kids using cognitive technology and brain science. Education hasn't changed over the last 300 years, and every person is unique and learns different, so today's concept of education doesn't make sense and needs to change. However, most educational systems in the world are still, use, still using the model of the textbook that tells us what, when, and how to learn. And the result is frustration. 31 million of students leaving school every year. So, because this is not working, online learning is rising. So, children especially are using more and more 
more educational applications as their tutors because they know how to use any device even before they can talk. So in this context, the big problem for parents and teachers is with so many information and so many data, how to select the right content. And this is when we come in because we are mapping the baby's brain during learning to personalize education, thanks to the research with the University Autonoma of Barcelona and the University of London. And in fact, this is why we won the MIT Young Innovators Awards. Infantium is a cognitive platform that delivers <coughs> A tailored, sorry, a tailored syllabus for every learner adapted to performance and to learning style powering third party content. So we pull data from every interaction from content of the kid so we can know how he learns and we can deliver the right content in the right time. So we are doing brain-inspired computing. First, neuroscience, because we are mapping the brain mechanisms during numeracy or literacy. And the computational model can learn from the kid and then decide what is best for him. Second, we are measuring engagement, motivation, because when we deliver a personal pathway for every kid, we give him what he, he likes more. And then big data to map performance. So we are doing this because we are partnering with the big ones, media companies, publishers, and also app developers. We are already have 30 big names that are using our cognitive API. Also, we are partnering with, we have uh, distribution agreements with the big ones, like Microsoft, Telefonica, and Almerop to have pre-installed our solution. And of course, global pilots to test here. In the cities that you are seeing, in the countries you are seeing here, potentially more than one million of users will be using our technology next year. And finally, to end, I want to say something. Um, IBM said, said that in the next five years, the classroom will learn you. But we go even further. In less than 10 years, the system of Infantium will be a standard because we are creating the world's largest repository of online connected content and also giving this knowledge and this data to any developer in the world. And we are also starting to partner with another startup of WIDA because we're in, in, in the accelerator to measure emotions so we can know what drives learning. And at the end, the result will be a better educational system. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for this enthusiastic pitch. Um, <laughs> You alluded to, to basing your business on, on sound neuroscientific research. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Do you do that research yourself? Do you partner with universities? Okay. And if so, with which? And OK. I mean, um, no, I'm not a scientist myself. We are partnering with the University Autonoma of Barcelona, and we are also partnering with the University of London. Basically, what we are doing is a cognitive model based on how the brain works during learning. So we can map the different areas. Imagine a kid is uh, learning to read. So we can map the different, um, the different, yeah, the different areas, like visual discrimination, uh, Recognizing, um, recognizing letters or uh, pronunciation, whatever. By doing this, we can measure do in the content the different indicators that we want to analyze from every content. And at the end, what we do is to translate uh, this cognitive model into a computational system that, that, that can replicate this, uh, the neural mechanisms of the brain. And this is the idea. And now we're starting to, um, yeah, we're starting to define after the MIT thing uh, a new collaboration with the Brain Research Institute of uh, the MIT. Yeah. Uh, how your technology can improve homeschooling? Homeschooling is perfect, basically because we are targeting uh, children between zero and seven, year, seven years old. So as you know, uh, it's, uh, it changed from country to, to country. In uh, countries like Finland, uh, until seven years old is especially important homeschooling in the United States as well. So this, uh, the, the, the system, uh, it is a solution pre-installing tablets or, or iPhone or whatever. I mean, um, allows the families to track uh, the progress of the kid. At the end, the system them also from every interaction gives uh, tools to parents and also teachers, but especially for parents in this case, to give personalized instruction because you receive data and you receive insights of which is the cognitive profile of the kid. Oh, yes. A very easy question about the monetizing. How, how do you do it? Okay, we have uh, three ways. We have the OEM. 
uh, agreements with these distributors, so we get a price per unit per, per installation. We also for, uh, we have for schools uh, licenses, uh, single seats, and also for the whole uh, school. And for parents, is an in-app purchase or a subscription to uh, have uh, unlimited access to content and progress reports and everything. And you're targeting the whole world. Yeah. You're targeting the whole world. Yeah, because at the end, uh, the model we are working with is brain research. And brain works the same here or in China. So at the end, what we are uh, looking for is to change the educational system, you know, to include technology as really a source of data that can help to discover features regarding the kid. OK, so on the final note, I think uh, what's fantastic is uh, with Karen, we have passion on the stage with a female entrepreneur that wants to disrupt one of the greatest industries of this world. Thank you very much. <laughs> so thank you so much. Uh, that was the first batch of a startup, so just five startups. If you want to see the rest, the five rest of startups, you can be here at 3 p.m. Uh, we're going to start Shark. Thank uh, you. And tomorrow, we'll announce the winners at 7 p.m. on the stage as well. So don't miss the next session at 3 p.m. and tomorrow night at 7 p.m. And thank you so much to the, all the judges here. Thank you. <laughs> See you at 3 p.m.